Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with over 167 episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Dangerous Assignment. The National Broadcasting Company brings you Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell in... Dangerous Assignment. The time near midnight. The place, Nigeria, West Africa. Two men stand on the swaying observation platform of a train which winds its way across a yawning chasm between two mountains. This gorge we're crossing looks pretty deep. Yeah, about a thousand feet. I didn't realize there were so many mountains in West Africa. This is the third trestle we've been over in the last hour. It is hilly country, but soon we reach the inland plateau where it is more level. Oh, you've been around this neck of the woods before, huh? Yeah. Oh, incidentally, I don't think we've met. I'm Russ Holden. Yeah, I know. Huh? I have been following you, Herr Holden. Following you? Hey, wait a minute. Get away from me. This is where you get off, Herr Holden. No, no, uh, no! no! You've seen him as Sergeant Markov in Bo Guest, as Charles Dana in Two Years Before the Mast. And now, here is our star, Brian Donlevy, in another two-fisted portrayal as Steve Mitchell in Dangerous Assignment. Flight 11 for Miami, Puerto Rico, Cape Verde Islands, and Dakar, West Africa. Now ready to depart. All aboard, please. Mr. your plane, Steve. Come on. Look, Ruth, I still don't know what this is all about. One minute I'm doing a smooth rumble with a smooth blonde. The next minute you're dragging me to a taxi, shoving passports and plane tickets down my throat. I can't help it, Steve. I just do what the commissioner tells me. Oh, oh, well, there he is, over at his car. Steve, Ruth, over here. Coming, commissioner. Ruth, will you see that Steve's suitcase is checked aboard the plane? Okay, commissioner. Steve, let's get in my car a minute. We can talk there. Okay. Now, make this quick, Steve. You're leaving for Nigeria, West Africa, in five minutes. West Africa? Now, now, look, Commissioner... We've got to move fast, Steve. We may be too late as it is. What do you mean? One of our men has been over there two weeks, Russ Holden. He was to have sent a report back not later than noon today. We haven't heard a word from him. Well, maybe he got delayed. I don't think so, Steve. I'm afraid Russ is dead. Dead? Look, what's this all about? Manganese. Manganese? That stuff they used making steel? Yes. Last week, all shipments of manganese to this country were suddenly cut off. We think the interests behind that move are trying to form a worldwide manganese cartel. If they succeed, our entire steel industry will be crippled. I still don't see what all this has to do with West Africa. Two weeks ago, we heard rumors that a rich vein of manganese had been discovered over there in the border country of northern Nigeria. Oh, I see. That area is controlled by a native tribal chief named Soba. And you sent Russ to negotiate with this Soba, huh? Yes. We want Soba to sign an agreement permitting United Nations representatives to start mining operations in that area. And we've got to get to him before the agents of the cartel do. And that's where I come in? On the surface, you'll be a foreign correspondent trying to get an interview with Soba. Let it get out, you're looking for him. Also, that you're trying to locate another foreign correspondent... Russ Holder. Lucky me. I get to play target. I'm afraid so. It's the quickest way of flushing the opposition out into the open. Steve, you'll be up against a tough outfit. They'll stop at nothing to keep you from getting to sober. They'll throw every obstacle in your path they can, including a bullet. Great. And they'll be trying to get to sober ahead of you, too. Steve, the plane's ready to take off. Okay, Ruth. Your 
First stop in Nigeria will be the Alexandria Hotel. We know Russ stayed there for a while. Alexandria Hotel, right. Steve, if Russ is still alive, find him and work together. If he isn't, go it alone. But above all, get through to Sober and get him to sign that agreement. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the Alexandria Hotel. You wish a room? Yeah, and a blotter. This rain is even more so than what the Florida papers say about California. Complete sign here, sir. Hmm. This is the rainy season, you know. No kidding. From now until October, sir. <laughs> you sound proud of it. You mean it's this way all over Nigeria? Off and on, sir. Fine. Mr. Steve Mitchell, United States. Hmm? Boy, take Mr. Mitchell's suitcase to room 22. Will you be staying with us long, Mr. Mitchell? No longer than I can help. I shouldn't be here at all. Sir? I'm a foreign correspondent. A friend of mine was supposed to do a story over here, but I guess he wandered into a bar somewhere and forgot all about it. So now I have to do it. What was your friend's name? Holden. Russ Holden. Why, Mr. Holden stayed at this hotel while he was in Lagos. When did he check out? Several days ago. I believe he took the train to Kugama. Kugama? Where's that? Inland and to the north, Mr. Mitchell. It's a long trip by train. What kind of country is it up there? Oh, very wild, sir. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I'm going to need more suitable clothes. Is there a store around here where I can get outfitted? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Carter's. It's right in the next block. Okay. I'll uh, give it a whirl as soon as I get out of these wet clothes. Right up the stairs until you're right, sir. The boy will have your room all ready for you. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Let me see your register. You wish a room? Let me look at that register. Why, sir? What business have you with... <gasps> register. Give it to me. All right. But... Let's have it. Mm. So he is Steve Mitchell. Uh, you may have it back. I don't understand. You ought to say nothing about this. Forget all about me, do you understand? But no, I don't understand. To help you forget. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? The uh, clerk at the hotel told me I could get some clothes for the back country here, but... I see you've got some other customers over there. I can wait. To tell the truth, sir, it's a relief to wait on you. Uh, what? That gentleman over there with the pith helmet on backwards is Mr. Brighton. He's being outfitted for his first hunt, and waiting on people like that is always a trying experience. Hmm. Who's the girl? She don't look very trying. That is Mrs. Brighton. Oh. Luckily, they've hired one of the best guides around here, the tall gentleman, Mr. Campbell. Well, fix me up with whatever I'll need, huh? Let's see now. You want a tunic and... Mr. Brighton, watch out with that rifle. Mr. Brighton! Hey! Oh. Are, are you all right, sir? Yeah, two inches to the right, and I wouldn't be. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Brighton, put down that gun before it goes off again. Are you okay, mister? Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so dreadfully sorry, old man. Look, where'd you learn to handle a gun, anyway? Oh, I, I, well, you see, I, I was trying to find out how to load it. And, yeah, you uh, found out all right. Uh, such a stupid accident. I'm frightfully sorry. Peter... You've distinguished yourself enough for one day. Let's go back to the hotel. I need a drink. That's probably a good idea, Mr. Brighton. I'll attend to the rest of the stuff. All right. Now, look, old man. Yeah, I... yeah, you're frightfully sorry. Let's let it go at that. Peter! Look, come in, my dear. I'm very sorry this happened to my store, so I'll get an outfit together immediately. Okay. Ought to be an easier way of making a living than this. Yeah. I can't say I'd care to play nursemaid to a trigger-happy tenderfoot like that. <laughs> oh, incidentally, I'm Steve Mitchell. Laird Campbell. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. American, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being a guide, you expect a certain percentage of lemons, but it looks like I hit the jackpot this time. To make it worse, Brighton has decided there's only one spot in Nigeria where he wants to hunt, way up north, past Kugama. Kugama? Yeah. Tomorrow we're taking that stinking train. Uh, look, Campbell, 
I'm a foreign correspondent, and I'm supposed to get a story on a tribal chief up there. Soba? Yeah. You know him? Yes, yes. I've hunted around there a couple of times. He gave me this good luck charm a few years ago. Yeah. Say, how would I go about getting to Soba's village? Well, it's pretty rugged country. You have to pack in from Kugama. Say, our safari will be headed in that direction. Why don't you go along with us? I could take you right to Soba's village. Well, I wouldn't want to inconvenience you. Oh, nonsense. No inconvenience. Believe me, I'd be glad of the company. And I don't think Brighton would have any objections. How about it? Well, that's a thought, Campbell. Thanks for the offer. I tell you, we can talk about it on the train to Kugama, huh? Okay. See you on board, Mitchell. What a cattle train. When do we get to Kugama, anyhow? Tomorrow noon. Care for another drink, Mrs. Brighton? Sure, I'd care for one, but better not. Hmm? Look at Peter over there, scowling away. He thinks I've had too many already. Oh, Mr. Brighton doesn't approve, huh? He's one of those physical fitness bugs. He must have read about Teddy Roosevelt when he was a kid. He's been trying to live dangerously ever since. <laughs> you know, you sound like you come from my side of the Atlantic. Kansas City. Oh, how do you happen how to... How'd I happen to wind up Mrs. Brighton? Who knows? One day I'm in the chorus at the Palladium in London. The next day, I'm Mrs. Peter Brighton. And I've been on a bicycle ever since. I think I'll have that drink after all. Lola, getting late. Hmm. You can read me like a book. Oh, well. Is this seat next to you occupied, sir? No, no, help yourself. Thank uh, you. What were you saying about being on a bicycle, Mrs. Brighton? Last year it was pig sticking in India. Have you ever been pig sticking? Not that I know of. Your husband must have a lot of time on his hands. Doesn't oh, he sure. work? He works. He's always got some big conference going on. He fools around with a lot of different interests, oils, mining, stuff like that. I see. Well, it's getting late. I think I'll turn in. Okay. See you in the morning, Mrs. Brighton. Good night, Mr. Mitchell. All right. It is very amusing. What? Permit me. I am Varchek. What's amusing? That everyone is suddenly going to Kogama. Oh, For years, I have operated trading posts up there, and nobody pay any attention to that region. But now, suddenly, everyone is interested in it. No. Does a hunting party and a newspaper hack after a story constitute everybody, (laughs) Warcheck? This hunting expedition and the story you seek, they would not by any chance have to do with the rumors of a discovery of manganese ore in that region, would they? You're doing the talking. If you prefer, I will confine my conversation to the scenery. Like I say, you're doing the talking. As a matter of fact, we are passing through some very beautiful country right now. Oh? Yes. We are approaching a gorge which is quite spectacular. The view from the observation platform is a rewarding one. Hmm. Is it? Well, I could do with some fresh air anyway. Thanks. You are quite welcome, sir. Good evening. Oh, join the view? Yeah, that's the some gorge we're going over. Yeah, it is almost a thousand feet deep, Herr Mitchell. Mitchell? How come you know my name? Who are you? Hey, what are you doing? Get your hands off me, will you? This what is where you get off, Mitchell? Watch out, now. A friend who beats you down there? Let go of me when you're up. Hey. Yeah! The National Broadcasting Company is bringing you Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell in the third of an exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment. Mitchell, you okay? Yeah. 
That was close. What happened, Mr. Mitchell? Mr. Campbell and I were sitting in the smoking car. We saw a man follow you outside, and then there were sounds of a fight. There was a fight, Vortex. The other guy lost. Over the side, huh? Uh-huh. That was some view you sent me out here to see, Vortex. Or wasn't that what you had in mind? I do not understand. What's the next town we get to, Campbell? Kano. Be there in a few minutes. But I have about a four-hour layover there. Telegraph office in the station? Yeah. Telegraph office? Yeah. The press association I work for is very strange, Warcheck. They like me to send them stories now and then. So that's what I'm going to do, if it's all right with you. Here's report, Commissioner. Good, let's have it. Considerable interest being shown in manganese air by tenderfoot hunter named Brighton and trader named Warcheck. I'm joining Brighton Safari to vicinity Chief Sober's village. Good. Sounds like he's been a busy bee, Commissioner. Oh, wait a minute. Almost got tossed into Canyon two hours ago. What? Afraid Russ Holden wasn't as lucky as I was. Oh, I was afraid of something like that, Ruth. Oh, Russ. Wait, there's more. I have two-hour layover here in Kano. I'm borrowing one of Campbell's native gun bearers to take me back to that ravine I almost got shoved into. Let's see. We're just about under that railroad trestle right now, Zuru. Wana, look. Yeah. Not a pretty sight, is it? Yeah, that's the guy who jumped me all right, Zuru. Wana? Yeah. I have seen that man before. What? Where? No can remember. Well, try to remember. Zuru, try. It's very important. Let's see. He ought to have some identification here in his wallet. There it is. Hans Graber. Hmm. Never heard of him. Wanna? Wanna? Me yeah. find something? What is it? Here. A wristwatch. Bones, too. It's Russ Holden's wristwatch. Crane leaves station soon. Time to go back, Wanna? Yeah. Come on, Zero. Thanks for lending me your boy, Campbell. He's a good one. Yeah? Zero? One of the best. He lived around this North Country most of his life. Matter of fact, he belongs to Soba's tribe. Oh? Mr. Mitchell, did you find anything at the bottom of a ravine? I found what I was looking for, Warcheck. The body of man who attacked you? Such a beastly thing to happen, old boy. Somebody have a grudge against you or some such silly thing? Apparently somebody does, Brighton. Still the man of mystery, Mr. Mitchell. Look, Warcheck. Warcheck, I've got one rule on safari. Everybody minds his own business. But of course, Mr. Campbell. Warcheck going with us? Yeah. He asked Brighton if he could tag along as far as his trading post. Always glad of company. Helps keep my wife from getting bored. How much longer before we get there, Campbell? I will pull into Kugama about noon. It'll take a couple of hours to load the jeeps. That'll get us started around two. By sunset tonight, we'll be camped in the bush. How about putting some more wood on the fire, Campbell? Yeah, sure thing. Give me a hand, will you, Mitchell? Okay, Campbell. That's better. What was that? Big cat out there somewhere. Good, good. Maybe we'll get a crack at him tomorrow. I can hardly wait. It's a wonderful ride on a stuffy train and a few charming hours bouncing in a jeep. Now a mangy lion waiting for us. How did I get so lucky? Well, if you will all excuse me, I think I will go to my tent. That's a good idea, me too. 
Probably be a good idea if we all turned in pretty soon. We'll want to get started by dawn. Who's out there? Zorro. Oh, oh. Come on in, Zorro. What is it? Wanna Campbell with you? No. Uh, Campbell's in his tent, isn't Not he? in tent. Oh, wait a minute. He said he was going to check the jeeps before he turned in. We'll look for him there. Uh, something I can do, Zorro? No. Me talk to Wanna Campbell. Oh, incidentally, have you remembered yet where you saw that dead guy in the ravine? Me only talk to Wanna Campbell. Only talk to Wanna Campbell. Hmm. What's with him? Mr. Mitchell. Huh? It's Marla Brighton. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Buy me a drink. Afraid I don't have anything. Oh, fine. I might have known Peter would carefully omit any liquor from his provision list. The world was that. Came from over there in that brush. Campbell! Campbell! Here I am, Mitchell. It's Zuru. Oh, what happened? Just going back to my tent. I heard Zuru scream, found him like this. His throat's been cut. Campbell, Campbell, what's all the what noise about? What was that frightful scream, my... Good heavens. Best boy I ever had. And he's dead. Murdered. Murdered? By whom? That's just what I'm wondering, Wachek. Perhaps a fight with one of the other bearers. Yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> The sun's coming up. We'll leave as soon as Brighton's ready. Uh, look, Campbell, maybe I better head for Sobu's village this morning instead of tagging along with you, huh? Well, I wouldn't advise you trying it alone, Mitchell. I'll take you over there later, as soon as Brighton's had enough hunting for the day. Okay. Is uh, Warcheck going with us this morning? No, he said he'd rather stay here at camp. Hmm. Say, Campbell, hmm? I didn't get a chance to talk to you last night after Zuru was murdered, but I think I know why he got it. What do you mean? Zuru told me that he'd seen the guy who tried to push me off the train before. Huh? Where had he seen him? I don't know. But I think he remembered last night and wanted to tell you about it. I wish he could have found me sooner. Uh, here comes Brighton. We can start now. Hey, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to stick pretty close to Brighton while we're out in the bush. <laughs> Afraid his gun may go off accidentally in your direction again? Yeah. I might not be so lucky this time. What time is it, Mitchell? Five to eight. Sitting in this jeep in the middle of the jungle is not my idea of sport. The sun is getting hotter by the minute, and so are the mosquitoes. Yeah. What's keeping Campbell? He said he and his gun bearer would pick up the trail of that lion and come right back for us. He's been gone almost an hour. Well, he'll probably be along in a few minutes, Brighton. Well, this isn't turning out at all the way I'd hoped. But I suppose I shouldn't have expected anything else. Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm sick of the whole business. I should never have let Campbell talk me into coming way up here in this godforsaken country. It was Campbell's idea to come up here? He said it was yours. Oh, no. He told me the hunting was better around here. Come on. Hmm? Get out of this jeep. Let's get into the brush. Hurry up. Oh, but Campbell told us to stay in this clearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably circling around behind us right now. Come on. Oh, Mitchell, I don't understand. Neither did I. Until just now. Here, into this brush. Get down. But why is Campbell shooting at us? Not us. Me. Look, you sit tight right here and you'll be okay. It's me he's after. Uh, Mitchell, where are you going? Soba's village. It's about two miles west of here. I hope. Hey, what's that? Sounds like the village just ahead. Yeah, there it is. Oh, 
Oh. Hey, it's some square dance. Ah, oh, well, here goes. Hey, look. Don't let me stop the feast. If one of you will just tell me where your chief is. It is not feast. Death does. Oh. Who are you? I want to talk to Soba, your chief. Is he around? Moronga. Jolo. Hey, now, wait a minute. Look. Moronga. What is it? White men want to talk to you. Is your name Soba? Yes. You come at bad time, white man. We have death dance for one of my people, Zuru. Bring his body into village this morning. Yeah, I know. Look, Soba, this is important. I've got to talk to you right away. Go to my hut, white man. We finish death dance, then we talk. Barunga! You sound like men who speak with straight tongue, Juana Mitchell. Maybe your people are right ones to dig in my ground for metal. Good. But you are too late. What? Other men promise my tribe much food and medicine. What other man? His trader man, Warchek. Warchek? Oh, looks like I pegged the wrong guy. Where is he? He's still in village. Yeah, I see him. Over by that other hut. Uh, excuse me, Silver. What check? What check? Ah, Mr. Mitchell. It would seem you arrived too late. Now, look, Warcheck. I've been through too much in this deal to let that cartel you're working for come out on top now. But you're mistaken, Mitchell. I work for no cartel but for myself. Why? You are bidding for mining rights. Cartel is also bidding for them. What more profitable place for me than in the middle where I can do business with the highest bidder? I... <laughs> Warcheck. Looks like Warcheck didn't stay in the middle very long. Campbell. Any agreement Warcheck has with the chief is void now. And with you out of the way, Mitchell, I think we'll be able your, to... Your man Garber missed, huh? So you're going to finish the job yourself? Yeah. You ought to get a promotion for this, Campbell. Uh-uh. Just money. A lot of it. Yeah. Enough money so you didn't even mind killing Zuru. When you realized he remembered seeing you and Graber together. That's a lie. Soba, it's not true. Mitchell here killed Zuru. You killer of Zuru. Look, Soba, I tell you, I didn't kill Zuru. It was Mitchell. White hunter lies. When my men pick up Zuru's body, they find good luck charm I gave you long time ago. What? Oh, I... I must have dropped it when I bent over Zuru after he died. No. Good luck charm under Zuru's body. Barunga! Uh, no. No, no, Soba. Barunga Blogan. No. No. Mitchell. You. Good, Marunga. Good. He killed one of my people. He die. You don't waste any time, Soba. Mitchell. What? Come. We go to my hut. We talk some more. Good. You can sign the agreement. I have the papers right here. No sign. What? Why? Soba no sign name. Soba can only make X. Oh. <laughs> well, look, Chief, don't worry about that. Right now, your X is going to look like a million bucks to me. Come on. You have just heard the third in an exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment is written by Bob Reif and directed by Bill Karn, with music by Bruce Ashley. Be with us again next week at this same time, when Brian Donlevy, starring as Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. <laughs> Thank you.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.